I know you have some paper that you look back on now and think, what was I thinking? Why did I buy that? Or maybe you have a sheet of two that came in a paper pad that's not quite your style. Hey creative friends, it's Gwen and today's focus is on ugly scrapbook paper. I have so many different tips and tricks to share with you and four broad paths that you can take. You get to choose what will work best for you and good news is all paths lead to getting those ugly scrapbook papers gone. I'll also let you know what not to do with them. Let's turn those ugly ducklings into swans. Path number one is to hide it. Quite often an ugly prints a problem because there's just so much of it. We'll talk about minimizing later on in the video. First though, I want to take it to the next level and show you how you can hide the print altogether. Yes, you can use up those ugly papers in a way that makes the print unrecognizable. You have a few options here. The easiest way is to add the pattern paper in between your paper layers. When you use a smaller piece of a bigger print, you can really change the look and feel of it. Do you have a pattern paper with something really odd on it? like maybe zebras, try using it as a photo mat and you won't even notice them. As a photo mat, they turn into an abstract art print. This works for all kinds of bold prints and patterns. It's a super simple idea and works a treat. You can also hide busy patterns by turning them into pockets or envelopes. You can use an envelope or pocket punch board for this and I find bolder prints on double-sided papers work best. You'll need to be sure to put the boldest print on the inside of your envelope or pocket because that's where you'll see it the least. Be sure to use double-sided papers because then you'll have a print on the inside and outside of your pocket. If you have a paper that is crazy ugly, one that you think is beyond saving, you can add it to the back of your layout for stability. I create a frame for many of my layouts so the inside section can be a little bit flimsy, especially if I've added a lot of paper layers and embellishments. Adding a full sheet to the back of the layout can add extra support. I trim a quarter of an inch off all four sides and then add it to the back with double-sided tape. No one will ever know what print is back there, so it's a great way to use up the ones you really don't love. If your ugly pattern paper is single-sided, you can ignore the print altogether and use the white side. I've embossed this bold pattern paper, but I'm actually going to be using the white side, so no one will ever know what's hidden underneath unless they watch this video. Shh. I've also used the white side of papers to practice new mixed media techniques. Path number two is to minimize it. Minimizing bold and ugly prints is the best way to use them up because you have oh so many options here. When you use a smaller amount of a big bold pattern, you can really change up the way that it looks. You can fussy cut out individual elements like I am here. And if you're after my best tips and tricks for fussy cutting, be sure to check the description box below. We all fussy cut out pretty florals from our 12 by 12 pattern papers. So why not use this same technique on bolder prints and patterns? I think you'll be surprised at just how useful these pieces can be. You can also die cut out shapes from them or pull out your paper punches and punch out pieces. I prefer to do this in bulk. I will pull out my Sizzix cutting machine and all of my paper punches and just punch out pieces. You can store them in containers so they're ready to go for your next project. Here you can see the difference between that big bold print and how it looks when cut into smaller die cut pieces. You can also cut the papers into paper strips. This works well because again, you're minimizing that print. I promise the prints will be so much easier to use when you have less of them to work with. When I was a kid, I hated broccoli. The one way I found to enjoy it was to pair it with something that I liked. I learned that broccoli wasn't so bad when mixed with something far more delicious. You can do this with your pattern papers too. Combine those ugly prints with some softer, more neutral ones that you really, really love. If you choose simpler and more neutral prints that you really love, 
you'll find that bowl print so much more enjoyable to eat. I mean, use. This idea works particularly well when creating your own embellishments. I'm going to layer up some die cut hearts here and I'm going to mix and match my papers and prints. I'm using small sections for the bold print and bigger sections of the papers that are more neutral that I love. And here's what you end up with, a really pretty embellishment that you can use on your next layer. Here's a design idea for you. Why not make a paper sandwich? If you put a busy paper in between two very plain coordinated pieces, you'll find it looks so much better. Path number three is to camouflage it. Sometimes patterns are too much, even when being used in small pieces. And do you really want to take forever to use up those ugly prints and patterns? There will come a time when you'll want to use up a bigger section of your bold print and pattern, and I've got ideas for that too. The first option you have here is to add ink. I prefer to do this with a blending tool, and it's best to use soft, more neutral colors. For this technique, you're looking to tone down the print. I'll add ink around the edge of the paper and then blend it out towards the center. All I'm trying to do here is tone back that print just a little. You can also soften a print by adding white gesso. I've done this with a brush and that works great, but also give this technique a try with a brayer just like this one. I find this technique works best when applying a small amount of gesso. You don't want to cover the print, you actually just want to soften it. You could also try this idea with acrylic paints and mist. Not into mixed media or in a rush, you can also soften a bold print by adding vellum over the top of it. Softer prints can get lost behind the vellum, so you do need to choose one that's quite saturated and bold for this technique. I've done this with a full 12 by 12 sheet of paper to create a background for my layout. You can even add in sequins in between the layers for a really fun interactive element. I do have a full step-by-step -step tutorial for a page just like this. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Another way to camouflage your ugly pattern paper is to tea dye or coffee dye it. The creatives who make junk journals have been doing this for years. They know that this technique can turn almost any paper into one that has a really soft vintage feel. I know just how important it is for you to see these ideas in action. So I have a bunch of layouts to share with you. Let's get started with a couple that use vellum. This is the layout that I was mentioning earlier. There is a full step-by-step -step tutorial on the channel for this one. I will leave a link in the description box below. As you can see, I have the vellum sheet over the entire background. This is a full 12 by 12 piece of paper with the vellum placed over the top and I have stitched the two sheets together so that inside there is now a pocket. I'm not sure how well you can see, but the pocket has sequins placed inside. It is the funnest thing ever. I love this page and every time I pick it up, I just wanna give it a little shake. So that's an example of the vellum covering the full background. You can actually do this in sections as well. For this layout, I have used this deep blue pattern paper and it is actually covering this entire section here of the page. I did want to soften and break up that big block of blue. So I've added the vellum just in this section here. I've done the same thing and created a pocket and inside the pocket is where you'll find the little sequins. Again, it's a little detail, you can shake, shake, shake. And I just like how it softens that print. I think this is a really good example of it to show you because you wouldn't really think that that's the same print underneath that vellum. That's how much it softens it. It's a really great technique, especially if you're like me and you're not really into a lot of mixed media. This next layout is a really good example of a page that had a bold print that I wanted to make a little less recognizable. This background paper here was filled with butterflies, very evenly spaced and geometrically placed butterflies. 
and it was a bit much for me. So I've used it as a background, as a border for my layout. And what I did do was actually fussy cut out a couple of the butterflies to use as embellishments. So I'm using two of the techniques that I've mentioned in the video. The first is to add it in behind paper layers to hide the print. And the second is to use those bigger elements in smaller sections as fussy cut out elements. This next layout is an example of paper strips. As you can see here, I am working with quite a bold print. This one here is quite dark. It would work very well with vellum over the top as well, but I'm going with the paper strips. So we have a, a big wide one down the bottom here, and then I've paired it with paper strips that are more neutral to kind of pair it back a little bit and then create those strips all the way along the background. So it does become a design element, the strips themselves, but it's also a really great way to tone back those really bold prints. I'm using less of them. I'm mixing my broccoli print with something a little tastier. And I'm also just, you know, adding in that linear structure for the page. Here's another example. This one's not as obvious because of course we only have one strip down this side edge, but what I have done with that one strip is also added it into my cut file. So I'm working with a much smaller piece of the print and adding it to more than one section. I'm still tying everything together here. So you can see it's in the leaves, it's in this uh, little tag here and down the end. So this is the same print here and here and um, then here and down here. And then I've also done the pairing and I've chosen this blue, this deep blue, and I've matched it with a print that's far more neutral. And I've used the blue and the print to balance everything out. If you've done a really good job of using your bold or ugly prints, you, you shouldn't notice them. They shouldn't stand out on a layout what might initially have been very uh, overwhelming, maybe when you were flicking through your paper pad, those prints that were super overwhelming to start with, when they're on a layout and when you've used the techniques that I've chat about today, you shouldn't notice them so much. Here's another idea for you. I actually love all of the papers in this one, but I can imagine this would be a great idea for any of your bolder prints. And that's to cut them into little scallop sections. So each of the scallops on this layout has been backed. It's a cut file. It's been backed in different prints and then mixed and matched. So you could definitely do like a, something that's a bit more bold and, and out there and use it as this print here, one for your frame, and then just mixed in a couple of times on your scallops. And then use your pretty prints, your more neutrals, the ones that coordinate with it to disguise it a little bit in the other scallops on the design. I've done a bunch of layouts with scallops like this and I love the look of it. So I'm gonna add that to my list. I'd love to see this used in with a mixture of an ugly bold print and something more neutral and sweet in between. This layout here was actually created as a challenge that I did for myself using 10 paper punches on a single layout. There is a full tutorial for it, so I will leave that linked below as well. But the reason I've pulled it out today to show you is this mix of bold prints. So there are a bunch of really bold prints here that you would not want to add in big sections on a layout, but it's amazing just how many of them you can use up if you're using them in very small sections. These have all been punched out with a square paper punch and then gridded up to create this background element. I've placed it all on a very, very neutral white background and I really love the look of this. Here's another couple of examples of the same idea. This one is a much larger square. I think this is two inch and the other one was one inch, but the idea remains the same and you can mix and match your prints. So choosing wisely, maybe just add in one or two of those bolder prints and team them with something more neutral. This grid runs this way on the layout and then I've anchored my photo and embellishments to it. 
I've also added in some stitching for a little bit of extra detail, but it's a great way to use up lots of little pieces of bolder prints. Here's another idea for you. This time I've used circles rather than squares. I was not trying to use up ugly paper for this one. I love this paper, but I wanted to be sure to include it so that you could see it as an example. So you could absolutely mix and match your more bold prints, those ugly papers, and put them in here in circle format and then pair them with ones that you love much, much more and pop it onto a neutral background. It would work exactly the same way. Here's a little close up. You can see that I've added stitching as well. And there is a full tutorial for this too. I have another couple of ideas for you. These two are using grid designs. So these prints were really nice. I did like them, but they were a lot. This one had a bunch of ladies swimming in a pool and this was a really bold Maggie Holmes floral. So I knew I wouldn't want to use a lot of those prints up all on my page. So I have gone with a grid design, a very clean, simple grid design. And that's always a winner. This one is a similar grid design. It's a little busier. But the, the thing I like about this one is that you're going to get lots of different prints in your layout. So it's four by four. Again, I wasn't using up papers I didn't like here. I love all of these. They're all ballet themed and this is me in my point shoes. So I, I love all the papers, but I feel like it's a really good way to show you how you could apply the ideas in the video to a layout. I'd like to remake this one as well using some of the bolder Maggie Holmes papers and just see how it turns out. I think the benefit here is that the cut file makes it very easy to put together because it creates the blocks for you. And then you can just add it to a really pretty background, one that you really, really love, and it should set it off really well. Don't worry if you don't have a cutting machine, you can just do this with a two and a half inch paper punch. And you can see the close-ups and you can see I've alternated the papers. So I have only used four different prints on this layout and then I've mixed and matched the order in which they appear on the grid. And lucky last is this layout here. I thought this was fun because it used a lot of different prints and patterns but it still feels really cohesive. And I think the winner here is because I'm using such small amounts of these busy prints. I feel like you can get away with so much more when you're working with very small parts of a print. Out of all the paths that we've talked about today, I feel like minimizing it is one of your best options. That plus the last option, which I'm about to talk about. So what should you not do with these pattern papers? If you have tried all of the techniques that we've already spoken about, it could be that the papers just aren't meant for you. The one thing that you should absolutely not do is hold on to them. Please do not store up things in your craft space that you do not love. It is totally fine for you to remove them from your stash. Path number four is to remove it. You can recycle it in your regular recycling. Remember, it's just pattern paper or you can donate it. I've donated mine to churches, schools or nursing homes. Just be sure to call ahead and ask them if they would like it. Sometimes they don't have the need or space to store it, so don't be offended if you get a no thank you. You've tried your best, so it's okay to let these things go. Holding on to them will not get your money back, and I promise you will feel so much better and creative working in a space filled with supplies that you really love. Buying bold pattern papers that you don't love is one big mistake that many scrapbookers make. And whilst the ideas in this video are sure to help you use that stash up, wouldn't it have been better to not make the mistake in the first place? What if I told you there are five other big mistakes that many scrapbookers make? You could be making them too. Learn what they are in this video right here. I will see you all again very soon. Until then, bye.